from AmericanRumReport.com. And this week, I'm really excited to be joined by three people. Uh, I think this is the most people I've had on one of these so far all at once. So I've got Dave McConnell, Sam Pierce, and Graham Hamlet from Three of Strong Spirits in Portland, Maine. Um, guys, I'm really excited to, to have you here today. Thanks for being here. How, how, how are all of you doing today? Great. Doing well, yeah, I'm in there. Don't everyone all jump in at once. <laughs> um, We're all too polite on this one. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I know it's always hard to find the find the rhythm. Um, so we're going to get started in, in just a minute, everyone. But uh, but first, real quick, just wanted to kind of go over the agenda and uh, show you around a little bit. So um, first of all, if you look on your screen, you'll see a chat window on the right. Um, feel free to chime in and let us know where you're tuning in from. We've already got some folks doing that. We've got people from Mexico, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, NYC, Oakland, California, and Maine, of course, which is, is very fitting. Um, so also, if you have a question at any point during the presentation, um, you'll see a, a little thing at the bottom that says, ask a question. So just hit that and enter your question there. That'll be the best way to make sure that we see it on our end, uh, because we are gonna reserve some time at the end to do a little Q&A. Uh, and then also, if you could invite your friends to join us, there's a share button at the top right. So go ahead, um, share the link, invite people to hop on. Um, but guys, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, the, the, the reason that um, you know I, I brought you guys on here today, I really wanted to have someone on to talk about what it's like to start a rum-focused distillery in the US. Um, and I know you guys opened your doors, I think last July, um, focused on rum from day one. Um, you've already released six different rums, I believe, um, that showcase a lot of variety. Um, and so I just thought it would be really interesting to be able to talk to a producer who's kind of at the stage you guys are in right now. Um, and I, I know it has not been a normal first year in business for a distillery at all, um, particularly over the last few months. Um, and, and maybe we can get into some of that. But um, anyway, before we kind of jump into everything, I want to give you each uh, a chance to quickly introduce yourself and just let people know um, what your role is at, at the distillery. So uh, Dave, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, so I am a lawyer. Uh, I've been a lawyer for the past 25 years or so, working with a variety of um, people in food and beverage, most specifically craft brewers. Um, and so naturally I got uh, stuck with uh, being the legal guy and the compliance guy um, at Three of Strong. And I'm also uh, sales and marketing. Awesome. Uh, Dave, do you wanna, you wanna jump in next? Or sorry, you, Dave just went, uh, Sam, do you wanna jump in next? Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Sam Purse. I am uh, a co-founder with Dave, uh, and we are, I jumped into this, uh, how we had lunch one day. I had run a previous business and I just sold it. And uh, Dave, we had lunch together and Dave said, hey, what, want to have some rum? And I'm like, yeah, day drinking, great, great plan. <laughs> and uh, it turned out that he was talking about starting up a distillery and uh, I've always had a long affinity for rum uh, as a spirit. Actually, one of the things we've learned in the first year is the uh, uh, the the market's uh, somewhat different reaction to rum than what we anticipated. Uh, but I think it's a um, so I, I in in the role of the company, I we all do everything, but uh, I you know really focus on the finance, on the administrative sort of making. Uh, you know, well, normally trying to pay the bills uh, and, and we're continuing to do that, though, uh, in slightly different ways, uh, some government help and all those things. But uh, we're basically moving, uh, moving the ball down the field on the finance side. Got it. Thank you. Uh, and then, Graham, tell us tell us about what you do at Three Strong. Um, Graham Hamlet. I am the lead distiller of. Uh, in fact, I guess the only distiller at this point. Uh, so just pretty much taking care of everything that having to do with production between uh, getting the ingredients, barreling, distilling, fermentation, all the fun stuff. Excellent. And I love that you're coming to us from the distillery, by the way. Everyone who's watching, if you you've probably noticed over Graham's shoulder, the, the big pot still back there. Um, yeah, exactly. yeah, there we go. Not, not a virtual lead. background. It's real. <laughs> exactly. No virtual backgrounds here. Um, <coughs> 
So guys, just to get into it, uh, Sam, you, you talked a little bit about this uh, just now, but uh, you know, how, how did you guys decide to start a rum distillery in Portland, Maine uh, in the first place? And how did, how did the three of you kind of come together on it? So I guess I'm probably to blame for that, <laughs> as Sam mentioned, um, you know, and as I indicated, I've been, I've been a lawyer for quite a while, um, but I have, um, I've always been really interested in the business side of uh, the folks I was working with, what they were doing and kind of more to the point. Uh, as Sam also mentioned, I love rum, as Sam does, uh, and Graham. And so why a rum distillery? Really, I'd love to say there was some like clever master plan. Uh, but really, it comes down to the fact that we just really, really love rum. I'm from uh, bourbon country originally. I, my family, I grew up in uh, southwestern Ohio, Cincinnati, and northern Kentucky. My family's there. And so that was, uh, you know, that was what I knew uh, as a, a young drinker. Um, but I came to rum um, fairly early on and was just really, really excited about sort of the range of expressions within that category, what you could do with it. Unlike, and I love, I still love bourbon. So any bourbon lovers on the stream, don't get pissed. <laughs> but bourbon, by definition, has to be a fairly narrow, um, it's in a fairly narrow lane in terms of, of the, the, the profile of what you're tasting. Uh, and rum can be so many different things that I just thought that was really exciting. And, you know, why Portland, Maine? Short answer is, again, I love Portland. It's, you know, we live here um, and we wanted to do it um, in a place like Portland. The longer answer is uh, we also thought and think that Portland is a place uh, in Maine that really values um, um, putting the time and the effort into producing quality food and drink really, mm -hmm. really punches above its weight. Uh, in that category. And so we thought that it, and it's in fact proven to be a really supportive place to, uh, to, to, to get started. That's but, great. And I, I just put um, a, an image of the outside of the, uh, outside of the distillery up there for everyone to see, um, to kind of get a mental picture of, of what everything looks like. Um, it's interesting. I, I haven't been able to visit Maine um, but everyone I know who has ever been to Portland, Maine always comes back with like great things to say about it. Um, it's like this hidden gem of a city. I feel like that I always hear about, um, but I, I, I've got to come someday. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love Portland. Um, but you know, again, it, as, as witnessed by the fact that there are three of us, uh, here for three of strong, uh, spirits, I, um, smart enough to know what I what I can't do. And so really very early on, I um, persuaded slash tricked my good friend, uh, <laughs> Sam, who I had known for years, and I knew uh, was, you know, incredibly bright, talented and passionate about rum, um, to bring him on board as well. And then Graham followed. Yeah. And, and on that note, I wanted to ask about, you know, Anytime a new distillery opens, uh, there, there's a variety, a variety of approaches people take. Some, a lot of times, the people who are starting the distillery end up, you know, being the ones just doing the distilling. Um, so I was interested to know, kind of, at, at what point did you guys decide you wanted to to bring on an experienced head distiller, and and how did you approach the hiring process? Um, so we were we had talked to a lot of people and sort of diligence and talking about, we had this crazy idea and didn't know, uh, you know, from a business model, how to sort of run it through. And we had a lot of people who told us that, you know, you, you guys can learn, um, you know, how to distill and you'll, you'll get there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that pretty early on, even in the pre-construction phase, we were starting to get questions about the engineers on, oh, what do you need? What size, well, what voltage, what, you know, what type of setup do you need? And, and the more that we guessed along with them on the answers, the more it became really clear that, you know, we, we were 
um, probably would have been able to get to a level of distillation skill at some point. But we also, uh, speaking of first year, we could have produced a year of year plus of bad rum, uh, which really wouldn't have put us. I'm going to say we would have we would have produced a decade of bad rum. <laughs> I'm just going to say just, that. Was, you were so kind about your statement of, of uh, you know, how, how uh, smart we were. But um, <laughs> I think we were pretty confident. We got really very fortunate in that we had, a, a, a along with the people we talked to, uh, included a, a really well-known James Beard-level chef down in Portsmouth who, who happened to know uh, Graham. And so we sort of talked to, um, we had this connection and we actually went down to Dogfish Head to, to try uh, to meet Graham and to, you know, try his wares and sort of got a really good sense of, you know, what was really exciting to us was his willingness. And I think we're learning this as a distiller trait was the willingness to tinker, uh, mm. you know, because the bottles they had were great. But we were probably most excited about a sample bottle that uh, Graham gave us a, of rum that had been he'd been thinking about and he'd just been playing around with. And we now uh, in Graham's lair uh, in the shop now, there is a, a science project table of all the different uh, things that are going on, which gives us a lot of flexibility in being able to move into new uh, into different expressions of the wide lane that uh, rum is. Um, and, and to sort of do it with confidence. So I think that the biggest thing was we realized that we very quickly were in over our heads on that aspect of the business. We were bringing a business sense to it and a finance background and, and an entrepreneurial spirit, but we didn't have the technical chops to do anything right off the bat. Yeah, I, I remember when the, the first article that I saw about you guys, what, what jumped out at me right away was, you know, A, the fact that, uh, I mean, there's there's new rums being released or distilleries, you know, making a rum for the first time in the US, you know, every, every week almost now. But um, it's still like when there's a new distillery opening up that is, you know, going to focus on rum and it's not just, you know, one of the spirits in their portfolio, like, Hey, that stands out to me right away. It's like, Oh, I should, I should look into this. Uh, but then also when I saw that you were hiring uh, Graham, who was coming from dogfish head spirits, um, I know many, many, many people tuning in probably know dogfish head for their beer, um, but they make some great spirits as well. And uh, I was like, oh, wow. So they're focused on rum. They're bringing in like a, a really experienced distiller. The, you know, this could be something really interesting from day one. So, um, Graham, I was interested to ask you, like, how much was rum on your radar when this opportunity came about? Because as, as Sam just said, I know, I, th I think you you had a couple of rums maybe at Dogfish Head, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so was, was, was making more rum like already on your mind or did you have to kind of warm up to the idea of, of focusing on it as a distiller who, had, you know, done a bunch of different things in your career? Um, you know, besides the, the, the overall enjoyment of just drinking rum, uh, the time at Dogfish Head was sort of my first, uh, dive into actual rum, uh, production, like on a mm. scale, uh, size. Uh, but it was something I've always been interested in. And, um, you know, my time at Dogfish Head, they had already been distilling uh, for since the early 2000s. So I went down there to kind of help uh, ramp up their production. They built a new distillery, um, but they already had their rum sort of dialed in, so to speak. So uh, when yeah. I was down there, it was kind of exciting because I could kind of reinvent it a little bit, but I still sort of had to hold true to what the uh, their, their flavor profile and already their fan base had uh, been enjoying. So, um, but during that time, there was things that I I was tinkering with in my mind, as kind of Sam had said, there were some samples uh, of fun rum styles and interpretations that I was just always playing around with. Uh, so when I came on with uh, Sam and Dave, it was exciting because it's kind of the the first time I could actually focus um, pretty much actually ever in my distilling career on a single spirit um, mm. and just try and, and really create all the different flavor profiles um, from, you know, just sugar cane. And um, 
it, you know, over the years I've had a history, I got my start sort of in the whole alcohol business uh, in the winery. Um, and that really highlighted the, the effects of yeast on uh, fermentation and the flavors developed during that. And you think of the, the distillation process as kind of an extraction and concentration of alcohol and flavor. Mm. Um, it was really cool to be able to start playing with some of these yeasts that I've always had tinkering in my mind from even way back when I was making wine that I always thought would be kind of a cool, uh, in, uh, you know, part of the rum production, whether it's from molasses or granulated sugar, there was always these cool flavors that would pop out uh, from fermenting grapes and other fruits that I thought would translate really well. Um, and then that kind of actually snowballed into our uh, merry meeting spice drum uh, my years of doing gins and things like that. I've always kept a, a small Rolodex, uh, if, if that's even a thing anymore, uh, in the back <laughs> of my mind of cool spices and flavors and things that I always thought would uh, kind of mesh together really well. So again, mm -hmm. it was awesome to be able to come on board with Sam and Dave and kind of let some of these, uh, uh, you know, creative avenues out and have a place to put them. Yeah, and we'll we'll definitely we'll talk a little bit about that that rum later. Uh, I remember the the first time I tried it though, I was like, okay, this is like this is this is a pretty different spice rum than what I've had before. Um, so, uh, on the note of you know the rum itself, and I'm gonna put um, some slides back up here just to show some of the gear you guys are working with to everyone. Um, what? Uh, how do you describe the the style of rum you produce at Three of Strong, and and how did you develop that style? That's that's one of the things I'm always interested in asking American rum producers, um, you know, because it, it's it's not like you necessarily have this historic American rum style, you know, tradition uh, to lean on in terms of like what flavor profile to go through and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, just talk us through how do you describe the rums you guys make? How did you develop that style? Uh, I guess on a, a very uh, blanketed style, um, as you can see from the equipment, our, our, our rums are pot stilled. Um, mm -hmm. So there's no bells or whistles really on it. So no deflagmators, no bubble trays, anything like that. It's a true pot still. Uh, the only thing I can adjust is the direction of the line arm. So I can switch that around to have an upward slope to create kind of a little bit of a cleaner spirit or a downward slope to kind of create a little bit more of a heavier spirit. Um, but, you know, a little more granular than that, uh, I always, I don't think it's, we're trying to make a style so much, but it's more of an approach that I take in that it's, um, you know, I kind of approach it with the, the concept of more creating a, uh, a sugar cane eau de vie where I always really want to make sure that the, uh, the base ingredients is the shining star of the spirit. Um, so we have a couple of different ingredients that we use here, you know, uh, all of them are organic. Uh, so like our granulated sugar, um, you know, our bright water, it's mostly that, but I ended up spiking that a little bit with some molasses. So, you know, you get the, the kind of the raw grassy, uh, notes from the granulated sugar with some of those uh, subtle kind of dark fruit notes from the uh, from the molasses. Um, and then our aged drum is 100% molasses based. Uh, so in both of those interpretations, I really wanted to make sure those ingredients shined uh, on top of uh, really showcasing the, the yeast that we've used and isolated, uh, which is kind of more of a wine yeast. So you kind of it allows some of those other flavors to brighten up a little bit and, you know, get some nice floral notes, a little bit of rose petal in there and a little bit fruitier notes and highlight those, but really wanting that, the, that style to be kind of the, an expression of the raw ingredients more than anything. Got it. And so just to, just to recap for everyone. So you guys, uh, I, I put some images on, uh, on the screen of kind of the, the core range of expressions that you guys had when you opened. I, and I know you've expanded since then, and we'll get into that in a few minutes. But um, so the rum you guys are, are uh, you know, fermenting, distilling there uh, on site is the the rum on the left, the, the bright water rum. It's unaged. And there's some of that rum in the, the rum in the middle as well, I believe. Um, but so you're using, uh, your, your fermentation is, is basically a combination of both molasses and, uh, 
sort of raw uh, granulated sugar. Um, how, how long is your fermentation on that? Uh, it's generally about uh, 10 days or so. I do a nice cool fermentation because it is a, a wine yeast, which uh, benefits from a little bit cooler temperatures and okay. um, kind of allow the, the yeast to just work naturally and do its magic and create some of those cool, uh, subtle esters. Um, so it's a little bit of a different approach, but, you know, a little bit longer uh, in, the, in the fermentation. And we found in the early experiments with yeah, you know, when we approached kind of what our silver rum wanted to be, we all uh, collectively loved, uh, you know, agricole style. Um, mm. And at the time, we were trying to sort of emulate that as a, uh, a cool flavor profile to target. So that was kind of what led us to use mostly the granulated sugar. But during the fermentation trials, and I always say the fermentation is sort of the, the meat and potatoes of uh, any spirit. Um, you know, so that is the critical step in the whole distillation process. Uh, I found that the granulated sugar, it needed a little bit extra something in there. And that's where I ended up putting some of those molasses in there to, you know, it has some micronutrients to feed the yeast, keep it healthy. But it also created a little more of a dynamic uh, style rum that we all enjoyed a little bit better than just the straight granulated uh, raw sugar. Got it. Um, and then I know if, if people are looking closely at this picture, they're, they're probably noticing that that rum on the far right uh, has the number 12 on it, which is there because it is a 12 year old rum. And then if they look a little closer, you may see in the middle, it says Colombian rum right there. Um, and so this, this is another thing that kind of caught my eye about you guys that I thought was interesting because you, you don't see every distillery doing this uh, in rum. Um, so in addition to the rum you produce at the distillery, you also bottle this aged rum uh, that you sourced from a Colombian distillery. Uh, what, what made you decide to, to go that route uh, in, in kind of the initial expressions you wanted to open the doors with? So much like the decision to open a rum distillery, the simple answer is we really love aged sipping rum and we wanted to have some at the beginning. I mean, you've kind of got a choice as a new distillery that you can either, uh, if you, <clears throat> either you're just going to sell, you know, gin or vodka or, you know, unaged rum and unaged product. And if you want to have aged spirits, eventually you're laying those down and kind of waiting for them to be ready. Um, to release. And we have, you know, we've been laying it down from day one, as you'll, um, I'm sure you'll, you, you could chat with Graham about sort of the yeah. volume and all that stuff. But um, we decided that we wanted to have an age product at, at, you know, from the outset. It's also 